What means these great white ships at sea, plowing their eastward track, bearing their mangled human freight, bringing the spent men back? They mean that New Zealand has been here. They mean she has played the game. And her wonderful sons have won their share of everlasting fame. Henry Armitage Sanders crouches beneath a tree. His fingers aim the long black cylinder, making delicate adjustments. Shutting one eye, his head falls into place, cheek resting against the cold steel. A barren swamp stretches into the background, framed by a file of fog-covered trees. In the foreground, a young man, sleeves rolled to his elbows, pummels the grit out of a standard uniform shirt. Hat fallen over his face. So intent is he on his work that he is oblivious to the watcher's presence. Sanders centers the man in his view and, exhaling to relieve the tension in his shoulders, he takes the shot. A dull thunk signals the closing of the shutter, and Sanders pulls his face away from the camera. Another moment is forever recorded. Another part of life at war captured. Perhaps the most dangerous role in a war is the least recognized. Frontline soldiers, nurses and doctors will never be forgotten. They are photographed and painted. Their stories written into our history books. But what of those who do the writing? What of those whose hands guide the paintbrushes? What of those who take shots not at people, but of them? Perhaps the most dangerous role not at people, but of them. Families of New Zealand soldiers in early World War I lived a nightmare, unable to comprehend what life was like for their men in the trenches. New Zealanders had seen official photos of the war. However, these rarely featured Kiwi troops. We had been relying entirely on the shared photos of other allied photographers something which could only satisfy friends and Fano for so long. Thus, in the last two years of the war, New Zealand finally appointed our first war ringatoi. Our very first war artists. The two men chosen for this job were artist Nugent Hermann Welch and English photographer Henry Armitage Sanders. These men had equally important, but quite different roles. Sanders' medium of painting was capable of censoring the more distressing aspects of the battlefield and could amplify the bravery, camaraderie, and mana of our soldiers. In fact, he rarely even chose to document the soldiers themselves preferring to paint the landscapes and give those back home a setting in which to view their men. Welch's photography, however, had a very different effect on perception of the war. Where a painting can soften the blow, a photo is brutally honest. Our photographers of World War I did nothing to calm the nerves of mothers who waited anxiously at home. To the contrary, they exposed the harsh reality of life and death at war. Not for comfort, but for necessity. What means these absent numbers, the gaps in the stricken lines? You will find the graves that tell you on the trail by Lonesome Pine. On the slopes of Akibaba, on Chaja Shimon's brow, they died the death 
of heroes, as New Zealand's sons know how. Motia Tia. Poems such as this one by an unknown Anzac give us a way to express our gratitude and our grief, to stand in the shoes of soldiers, if only for a moment. A picture may paint a thousand words, but it can never be the outlet of emotion that a poem or wire is. Many took advantage of this, and hundreds of poems were written about the landing at Gallipoli and the horrors of Passchendaele. These poems, whether by official war artists, such as the modern Mike Sabritsky, or simply soldiers yearning for home, carry more meaning than a library of history books. The soldiers who fought gave us this history, but the artists placed themselves in just as much danger risked their lives just as frequently to record one of both the darkest and the bravest hours of our history. Remember them. There is silence on the beaches now. The battle din has fled from the gullies, cliffs, and ridges where they charged up, fought, and bled. There's a little cove that's sacred north of Garba Tipi Hill to the glory of the men who died and the name that never will. Remember them. Remember them, for they could not be in the photo when they were behind the camera. <laughs>